All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to day 10. Let's get to work. So today we're focused on the database folder. Now, you're already familiar with migrations, and that's great. But now the next stop on your learning is factories. So have a look at this one that comes out of the box, user factory. Okay, so I see a definition method, and it looks like it has various uh, database table attributes that consist of fake data. So notice we have name corresponds to any kind of fake name. And then email corresponds to a unique fake email address, uh, a timestamp that can just be set to now. And then it looks like we also have additional methods to to configure that that generated user in some fashion. So if we want a user that's in an unverified state, it looks like we can call this state method where we tweak the attributes in some uh, shape or form. Okay. So what do we use a factory for? Well, the answer is many things. We can use a factory for any situation where we quickly need to scaffold or generate, in this case, a user. So hmm, imagine you're writing a test and that test says, well, given I have 10 users, when I da da da, then I should ba ba ba, right? Well, that first step, given we have 10 users, we could use a factory to quickly generate those. Uh, another example would be for simply uh, whipping up your local uh, environment. So, for example, in our case, we have job listings, right? And if I switch to Table Plus, right now, we only have one. But yeah, when we're working in our local environment, it might be useful to have potentially 50 different job listings. And I certainly don't want to manually create 49 more records. So again, a factory is a, a good use case for that. Okay, so we have a user factory here. How do we use it? Well, you can do it anywhere you want, uh, anywhere you can write Laravel code. Uh, once again, though, I'm going to reach for PHP Artisan Tinker. Now, if I want a fake user, then I need to reference my user class. And actually, on that note, let's switch back real quick. So let's go into app models user. And yeah, remember when we generated a eloquent model using PHP Artisan make model, we saw that there was a use has factory trait. And I said, I think, let's put a pin in that just for a moment. Well, now we're taking the pin out. Uh, has factory adds a number of methods to the user class uh, for generating uh, factories. And one of those methods is, wait for it, drum roll, dot, 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 factory. Okay, so let's play around. User, factory, create. Create a new factory for the user class. This is our API. So I'm going to give it a run. Oh, but it fails. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Okay, this is good. This is a, a good learning opportunity. So we tried to generate a new user factory, but it noticed that there's no column named name, even though the factory includes one. So let's have a look real quick. If I switch back to user factory, yeah, this is what comes out of the box. But you'll remember a number of episodes ago, just, just as an exercise, we change name to first name and last name. So if I switch back and and view the structure for a user, yeah, we tweaked this uh, any number of episodes ago. So of course, it's failing. That's expected behavior. Okay, so we could either bring this back to a simple name uh, column, or why don't we update this? So instead of name, I will have first name. And now you see this fake function here? Uh, this makes use of an API called Faker, and I'll switch back here. And Faker includes a variety of methods for just about any form of fake data you can imagine. And what's cool about APIs like this is you can just guess what it is. So for example, if I want a fake name, there's probably a, a method called first name, and there it is. I didn't even know that was one, but there is, right? That's the cool thing about APIs like this. So with that in mind, is there a last name method? Yes, there is. So I can update this as well. Okay. So uh, we're going to give it one more try, but take a look at this. If I press the up arrow key and I run it again, it still fails. And this is an important thing to remember. Uh, when you run PHP Artisan Tinker, all of that code is loaded into memory. So when we make changes, well, we have to exit out and then restart. So I can press Control C to uh, exit out, and then I will bring it back up. All right, and now once again, I can press up to cycle to my last command, run it, and this time it works. Okay, so notice it creates a new record within the users table and it returns to us a new instance of that user. 
So if I come back and switch to users, let's go to data. Sure enough, we have a new record of fake data. Okay, but what about situations where I want many records? Well, we can do this. User, factory, and as the first argument to this factory function, we can provide a number. So let's create, just to illustrate this, let's create a hundred fake users. All right, that's done. It's very quick. Give it a refresh. And yeah, now you can start to see the power of this. So when you are working in your local environment and you're playing around with some things and you want a bunch of different uh, job listings, well, you could use a factory to quickly uh, scaffold them. So let's do that now. If I switch back, yeah, at the moment, we only have a single user factory. Uh, and of course, I could duplicate this and rename it to job listing factory. But yeah, situations like this always reach for a generator. So control C, PHP artisan make factory. And yeah, don't forget, if you're confused about what argument to pass, you can proceed it with help. And I can see, all right, let's include the name of the factory. And then optionally, I can include the name of the corresponding eloquent model. All right, PHP artisan make factory. Um, job factory. All right, let's give that a run. And now we have a factory for a job. All right, so what about the attributes here? Well, it looks like we have a title and a salary. All right, so let's do a title. And this is a job title. So I believe the Faker library has a method called job title, and it does. Great. Next salary. Um, what could we do here? We could do a fake number of sorts. Um, or remember, it doesn't have to be random. So in situations where it just doesn't matter whatsoever, then feel free to hard code a value. Like if, if this is, if this is fine and will suit your needs, then you can do that. Uh, but if you want a variety of salaries for filtering or something like that, then you would want to make it dynamic. So it just depends, uh, on what your needs are. All right. And I think that should do it. So let's give it another shot. PHP artisan tinker app models job factory creates. So again, notice how all we had to do is create the corresponding factory and Laravel is smart enough to figure out what that mapping will likely be. Give it a run. Ooh, we get a call to undefined method job factory. Okay, let's scroll up. And I think I know why. Yeah. So remember this particular class we created manually because a number of episodes ago, we already had a plain old job class to work with. But I want you to notice the difference here. If I switch to user, it uses this has factory traits. And yeah, we, we saw this uh, a couple episodes ago. If we make any old uh, model, make model post, that uh, the generator will include this trait here. But again, because we manually created the job class, we haven't done that yet. Okay, so let's delete this and manually add it on. We're going to use has factory. And notice that long path there. So. Ideally, make sure you're using some kind of uh, IDE or editor that has auto completion. Use has factory. Yeah, you have to pull in this trait because the trait is what affords us that factory method call. All right, sorry about that. Let's do it one more time. PHP artisan tinker up, create a factory for a job. And there we go. This time we have a data processing equipment repairer. That sounds like a, an exciting job. And there we go. All right, once again, let's do a bunch. Let's do um, 300 random fake jobs. And again, notice how quick that is. Give it a refresh, and there you go. We got musician, physicist, warehouse, geological data technician. Uh, it's pretty cool, actually, when you think of it. Now, what about if I switch back to user? You'll remember, uh, excuse me, let's go into user factory. Okay. So you'll remember there's an additional method called unverified. And it looks like if we want a user in an unverified state, that would mean email verified ad is set to null. But notice by default up here, it's just set to now. So if we switch back, all of these users, where is it? We'll have uh, the email verified ad uh, timestamp set. Okay, so how do we activate uh, this particular state? And that would be the term, by the way, that we use, state. Well, like this app models user factory and then we call the state method which is unverified create and that's it so notice email verified ad is set to null so yeah you're not going to reach for this all the time but trust me once you start building um, more 
substantial projects, you, you'll run into situations like this where, yeah, you need to create a model or a record that's in a very particular state, uh, usually for the purposes of performing a test. So I'll let you take a look at this. Notice you create a method, uh, give it any name you want. And then within that method, you call a state method on the object where you pass it a closure, a function that returns an array. Okay, so you can create these yourself as well. For example, often, um, we'll just do this as a quick exercise. Often, for simple projects, your user table might have an admin status. And let's say by default, uh, it's set to false. You're not an admin. But yeah, maybe in certain situations, you want to say, well, given I have a user who is an administrator, when I bada bing, bada boom, then I should zip, zap, zap, right? Uh, so yeah, that would be a good use case for a state. So I could just copy what I have here and say, okay, well, this one, this state will be called admin, and this will set the admin status to true. All right, and that's it. Now you have a, a new piece of state. So you would say user factory admin create. And now that will use all of this data, but then it's effectively going to grab these attributes and merge them and override uh, the defaults. And that would be one way to deal with this. Lovely. Now, keep in mind, in the next episode, we're going to have a full lesson around eloquent relationships, but I kind of want to scratch the surface just a little bit to finish up this video, and you'll see why in just a minute. Now, it makes sense that any given job on our site would correspond or have a relationship to a given employer. So you can imagine if, if we're really popular and Microsoft signs up, then Microsoft could have a hundred different uh, job listings, and we want that relationship to exist. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to go into my migrations folder to our job listings table, and now I'm going to say, well, a job listing belongs to an employer. So we'd probably want some kind of foreign ID uh, called, I don't know, employer. ID. That would make sense. So for every single job listing, there's an employer ID column that points to the corresponding employer. Uh, but right now I don't have an employer's table. So that's the next step. Let's do that real quick. PHP artisan make. Now we could do migration, but like we learned at the end of the last episode, we could also start with the model, which would be employer. And then I could say also generate a migration as part of that. So let's give that a run. And now we have two new files, our employer eloquent model and the create employers table migration. Cool. So let's have a look at that right here. So an employer will have a name. And yeah, maybe at least for a demo, maybe that's enough to get us up and running. Cool. So if we switch back to our job listings table, now check this out. I could say, uh, well, I could say unsigned big integer employer ID. So why are we doing unsigned big integer? Well, that's because whenever you call this ID method within a migration, that's actually creating a big integer column. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah, so it's creating a big integer that automatically increments. So when you generate your foreign keys, you want to make sure that the type of the foreign key is identical. So that's why I'm also using an unsigned big integer. However, another option is to use this table foreign ID for and notice right here the the argument it expects is an eloquent model. So I could say, well, follow a convention and create the necessary foreign ID for an employer. And that would be another way to do it. All right, so let's give this a shot. Now, because we've made some changes and we're so early in the project, I will often uh, run migrate fresh, just drop everything and run it from scratch. All right, so now we've built up all of our tables uh, from the beginning. Okay, so if we come back, give it a refresh, of course, we've lost all of our seed data, and that's fine. But if we have a look at job listings, we now have an employer ID, a title, and a salary, and the employer ID refers to this new employer's table. All right, so now if we go back to our job factory, this is no longer enough. And in fact, if we try it out, um, where are we? There we go. Let's try to create 300 jobs. It doesn't work because, of course, employer ID was not provided. So we need to update our factory. 
So employer ID. But yeah, what do we set this to? Uh, do we hard code it? Well, if that's fine for your needs, then great, have at it. It'll be the quickest option. But yeah, usually it would be helpful to say, well, whenever you generate a job, as part of that, I also want you to generate any uh, corresponding relationships like an employer. So we can do that by saying employer factory, just like this. So now when Laravel comes to this, it'll know, okay, we also need an employer factory. So I will generate that, persist it in the database, and then use that unique ID as the corresponding employer ID. Okay, but now this isn't going to work either, right? Let's give it another shot. Petri Artisan Tinker, run it again, and it still fails. Employer factory not found. All right, let's see what the problem is. We come back up. We now have an employer model. It is using the trait, but there's no corresponding uh, employer factory. Okay, so let's have a look at this. If I run PHP Artisan help make model, yes, we know that we can use dash M to create the migration. But check this out. We can also pass dash F to generate a factory as well. So here's what I'll do. I'm going to delete this just so we can do it together. PHP Artisan make model. I'm not going to do dash M this time because we already had the migration, but I will say uh, employer dash F, and now we get the model and the factory. Cool. So here's our new employer factory. And like I said, all we have right now is a name. So I could do a fake. Um, maybe is there a business? No, company. Yeah, company. Let's do a fake company name. All right. So are we on the same page? Now, when I want to generate a new job, It'll create a fake job title. Uh, it'll hard code a salary. And then for the corresponding employer, it'll reference an employer factory. So Laravel will read that. It will then generate a new employer record. And that will have a unique ID, right? And that ID will be substituted as the employer ID here. All right, let's give it a shot. PHP Artisan Tinker, press up. And this time I'm going to generate, how about 10 jobs? All right, and it works. All right, let's have a look in our database. So I exited out and I'm going to reopen it. Again, when you're using SQLite, sometimes you should do that when you drop the database entirely and build it up from scratch. Uh, if you ever have a situation where your table is not reflecting the change you made, it's probably related to that. All right, so here are the job listing. We have forest fire, fighter, landscape artist, manager, a pipe fitter. And each of those uh, belongs to a corresponding employer. So let's see. The forest firefighter belongs to the employer with an ID of two. And it looks like that one is whatever, whatever this is. These all look like confusing law firm names, uh, but but that's that's entirely fine. And again, I want you to notice how each of these job listings belongs to its own employer. Now, there will be situations where you want multiple job listings to belong to the same employer. And for that, you can use a method called recycle. Uh, we're not going to get into that right now. But if you want, if you want some extra credit, you could have a look at that. But yeah, otherwise, I think I think that's going to do it uh, for this episode. All right. So model factories, you've learned that they are excellent for scaffolding data for your local environment and also for the purposes of preparing a test. Now, we wrapped up by learning just a little bit about database relationships. We set it up so that a job listing belongs to a corresponding employer, and we got that to work on the database end. But what about the eloquent end? So if I do have a job object, how do I then fetch the name of the employer who created that listing? Well, that's going to be the subject of day 11. I'll see you then. Bye.